early 20th century was a time of progress, change, and hope for Americans. There was a deep sense of pride and unwavering belief that their future was bright, that nothing could hinder the steady improvement of their lives. But unexpectedly, this confidence was shuttered with the crash of 1929. While millions of Americans struggled to survive under the crushing weight of the Great Depression, movies were a favorite escape from life's trials and tribulations. Issues of money and class were at the forefront of American consciousness, and screwball comedies played with class differences, bringing the poor up and the rich down, and letting them mix in ways that they rarely did in reality. The queen of the genre was Carol Lombard. In 1999, the American Film Institute named her as one of the greatest female screen legends. She was and is adored by her fans. And even after so many years, their love for her has not vanished. Currently, her fans celebrate her in hundreds of videos, websites, and books, not only for her movies, but also because they recognize in her the small town girl who had made good despite the odds. A girl with indomitable spirit and admirable character. This is her untold story. The story of a remarkable woman who touched the hearts of all who met her. The story of a woman who at every step thought about how to help those who crossed her path. This is the story of Carol Lombard. Carol Lombard's mother, Elizabeth Knight Peters, nicknamed Bess, was among three sisters from the affluent Knight family of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Her grandfather was one of the financiers of the first transatlantic cable. Bess had appeared in some of the minor theatrical productions and had caught the eye of the son of a local hardware company owner, Frederick Peters. Frederick courted Bess, and they eventually married. Children followed, Frederick Jr. in 1902, Stuart in 1905, and finally a girl, Jane Alice on October 6, 1908. Jane Alice, who later in life would take the stage name Carol Lombard, was born at this house at 704 Rock Hill Street. Bess was active in the Fort Wayne community. During the flood of 1913, Bess's fortitude made a permanent impression on her daughter. Amid chaos, Bess was a leader, masterminding the logistics of evacuating and hosting refugees who had to evacuate their homes. Helping others became an integral part of Carol's philosophy of life. In the meantime, Bess's husband, Frederick, had been a victim of a workplace injury, and it had caused him chronic headaches and irritation. So in the fall of 1914, Bess, in agreement with her husband, moved to California with her children a move that was initially planned as a temporary one. During the same years, an emerging religion had reached America, the Baha'i Faith. Abdul Baha, the son of Baha'u'llah, had visited the United States in 1912 to share the message of peace and unity brought by his father. Newspapers all over the country, including newspapers in Bess's hometown, reported on the visit. Baha'is believe that throughout history, God has sent to humanity a series of divine educators, Moses, Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad, and so on, whose teachings have provided the basis for the advancement of civilization. So for Baha'is, the different world religions are not in conflict with each other, but are essentially the manifestation of the same eternal truth. Baha'is believe the crucial need facing humanity is to find a unifying vision of the future and believe that such a vision unfolds in the writings of Baha'u'llah, the latest of these divine educators. In 1916, Bess and her children moved to a new home in Southern California. Among their new neighbors were the Platts. After Abdul Baha's visit to Los Angeles, Mrs. Oral Platt, daughter of Senator James Arkell, had accepted the emerging faith. Mrs. Platt had the honor of receiving four personal letters from Abdu'l-Baha. 